Hey guys, and welcome to a showdown between two of the most fearsome warriors in the community. On the left hand side, representing DBD and the Beastmen, we have Capt Tellus up against Extreme Meme Team's very own Pugnabon, bringing my favourite Dino Boys, including an arc of Sotek. So you can see Pugnabon, a man of class and culture. On the left hand side for the Beastmen, we do have a nice little cheeky vanguard force of Chaos Warhounds and Poison. In fact, we're going to pause this game as we start, as you can see, it's on Troll Country and shall get underway rather swiftly. In the main battle line for the Beastmen, we have Ungore Herds and Gore Herds slotted all the way along, so just a sway of smelly beast herds who are going to be really trying to overwhelm the enemy, box them in and uh, get into those juicy back lines while the big heavy hitters of the build dish out the damage because we have two Ungor Raiders in the back and some more Warhounds on the right hand side but no Bestigors, no Elite Infantry or any of that good stuff. It's going to be coming in in the big old single entity front. We have Torox the Brass Ball coming in with a lot of his goodies here looking as fearsome as ever. Torox has been a really cool addition to the game. The Beastmen having a tanky lord who can also dish out damage unlike the Shadow Gave, is quite fun though, of course, he is completely melee based. We do have the Blood Brute Behemoth here, the Regiment of Renowned Gorgon, very good up against factions who have single entity monsters. He will duel pretty much anything besides, say, a Dread Saurian and have an absolute whale of a time. We also have the Glorious Javaslife doing a uh, really weird pose here. He's such a janky fellow and I absolutely love the attack animations of the Javaslifes. I know some people aren't the biggest fans of them and the Quattles because they can get in and out of danger really easily, but I, I approve of them massively. They're super fun and have some uh, really cool stuff. It looks like the Brave Shaman of Death, his Razor Gold's actually purple. What is this madness? It looks so cool. And he's going to be coming in, of course, with just Spirit Leech. So on that cheeky chariot, looking to run and ram down the enemy. Is this new? I swear the Razor Gold chariots, the Razor Gold's were never purple before. That looks badass as hell. So for the forces of the Lizardmen taking a defensive formation on the high ground here, clearly outnumbered by the enemy, with Oxyotl leading the main battle line alongside a Skink Oracle, a very deadly character assassin. If he stays online long enough, he will easily shoot down the big beasties that the Beastmen have brought to the table, coming in with just Earth Blood as well. We then have a load of Saurus Warriors dotted around the rim of this battle line, guided by the Ark of Sotek, Gary himself. Even though he can't feel us right now because he's in pause, let's give him a little, little neck scratch just to let him know he is the best boy. We also have a Feral Stegodon, and all of this is designed to protect the Umbral Tide and a unit of Salamander Hunting Packs. I did a video on these guys not too long ago, I think for their cost now, they are very effective, and in this matchup, if you can protect them, they will ruin the day of a Javis life quite comfortably. We have the Cohort of Sotek in the middle to help protect them, as well as some Saurus Warriors in deep reserve here, and a Skink Priest of Beast come the Manticore Summon, which is 20 Winds of Magic now, which is hugely expensive, as well as the Curse, which is a very good spell. It looks like the Umbral Tide can be opening up on the Chaos Warhounds here again. Not within the most amount of damage because they're more designed to take down anti-large, but hey, damage is damage at the end of the day. And it looks like those hounds got a little bit greedy trying to hunt down Oxyotl and simply get forced off before the might of the Bastilodon. And now the Ungors and Gores are going to be eating some savage charges from the Saurus Warriors. Engaging a little bit early here and punning, punished for it as well. Lovely little Spirit Leech does go down on Oxyotl. He does not have uh, any way of healing himself. But the Earthblood from the Skink Oracle may be able to keep him nice and happy. Ungol Rain is taking quite a bit of damage there from the uh, Umbral Tide, as well as the Salamander Hunting Pack. And Gores have engaged with Source Warriors all across the front line. And it's going to be brutal fight now down in the pits. Particularly with the Brave Shaman on his swanky mounts coming in. And uh, doing some horrendous damage to those Source Warriors. Look at them! Just get dispatched there by the Brave Shaman. Lots of 8 kills already. HP damage though, it has been very good. Feral Stegodon as well as Bastilodon are currently going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Blood Brute as well as Torox. Not a fight they're going to win, but with some fire support maybe there is hope, though there are Chaos Warhounds darting in between the uh, ranks of the Hounds, trying to get at them in the back line. But a lot of them are starting to be shut down by some good micro management by Puck and Bon, trying to put out fires that Cap tell us is lighting up under him. Down here, the poor Oxyotl is uh, in the middle of a monster fight between the Javaslife and the Skink Oracle. He uh, certainly wants to try to fall back where possible and uh, kite from afar, but it looks like Spirit Leech is going to be popped on him once more. And the Beastmen really have ramrod their way into this battle line. Some really aggressive Salamander play, though, as the Hunting Pack darts forward and starts feasting upon the souls of the Ungor Raiders, though there are some Warhounds here to help support, which could be bad news for the Salamanders, though they're not terrible in combat. Umbral Tide have turned their wrath upon the Jabba Slife, who's getting annihilated here. 
Look at the damage coming in from them. Oh, the Fire Doggo's doing some glorious work. Jabba's Life does manage to escape, though, the Prowling Eyes of the Skink Oracle. So it is actually blind, so Prowling Eyes may not be the best word there. Oxyoto is again beaten up by Torx the Brass Bull. Brass Bully has been popped on him, and he is quite comfortable beating up this Skink Oracle. Umbral Tide and Salamanders starting to focus down the Blood Brute Behemoth. Not a bad target whatsoever as he goes to dish out the pain on this Feral Stegler. Doing some massive damage there with the hits. But it looks like the Jedi's Life has returned to the field. That could be quite problematic for the forces of the Lizardmen here. Halka Sotek is very healthy right now. Could be used to help clean up the majority of the infantry. And yet another Spirit Leech goes down on Oxyoto. That's been quite a few now. Poor little Skink Oracle is gaining but handed to him by the Blood Brute Behemoth, who actually slices him in the back, bringing down the Mighty Beast. And that's how you handle a Skink Oracle. You simply stab him and jab him a load of times until he's deader than dead. Feral Stegodon has been hit by Cold-Blooded to keep him alive in the action. And it looks like there's a bit of a truce here as they mourn the body of the Skink Oracle. As the Behemoth looks one way quite sad, the Basildon are sniffing his friend, realising he is doomed. I'm sure they'll be getting at it once they've both recovered from their traumatic experiences here. Unfortunately, it looks like Double Tide have finally been shut down. Jabba Slide again amongst them. Ferris Dagon probably wants to turn and fight this, particularly with the support of the Saurus Warriors and the Sel Skink Priest, and they're going at it quite hard here. And I think the Feral Stegodon is going to fare pretty okay, particularly on the initial charge. But the Jabba Slide with their poison attacks could start causing all kinds of problems. The Ark of Sotek going toe to toe with the Blood Brute. Though supported with Saurus Warriors, Torx the Brass Bull is nearby as well. It looks like he has been forced back, and now the real duel. Get that Feral Stegodon out of here. We want to see Bastilladon go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Jabba Slife. And that's just what we're getting. Jabba Slife, in fact, flinging a Torox rather disrespectfully to the ground. And we have the fight of the Apex Predators. Go, little Gary, go. He's roaring, but backing up as well. Luckily, the Skinks do see their master in need. And uh, they're going to be floating over to try to dish out the damage. And it looks like the Jabba Slife does get a beat back there by the Arcasote. Good job, Gary. But now he has bigger problems in the form of Blood Brute. Lovely little curse has come down though. Lowering his uh, melee defense considerably, meaning a lot of damage is going to start to be taken from the Saurus Warriors. But the Blood Brute always gets his meal, and he does slay his second dino of the day. In fact, maybe third. I think he killed all three dinosaurs. That's pretty insane. Only 10 kills, but I'm rather interested to see what his damage is in the end game here. Unfortunately, the cohort of Sotek, though they have refused to die, popped. Probably won't be able to hunt down at both the Ungol Raiders, particularly with some really good Warhound pressure. They can come in to harass these guys. And the Javis Life does survive and come back once more. Balance power is heavily, heavily now in favour of the Beastmen forces. The leadership's running. There's no magic left to try to break down the big beasties. And look at those slicing attacks by the Blood Brute. Really carving a bloody path through the Saurus Warriors. Oh, he's got some really cool attack animations and so does Torox. They're both just having an absolute whale of a time now and enjoying themselves. And it looks like the poor children of the old ones will be going down here. Now, this was a tournament game. Cap Tellus actually had some pretty ridiculous opponents. I think he faced off against Saphir, Tank, and Pugnabon. Those are three foes that you'd expect to face in the final, not in a tournament run. So very well played to him here, getting that Pyrrhic victory, but also well played to Pugnabon up against what is now, in my opinion, a pretty tough matchup, at least at the moment. We'll have to do some more experimenting. Figure stuff out with the, the Liz menu units as well as uh, trying to handle the new Beastmen because the combination of Jabba Slife as well as this Blood Brute is so good. It is so nice for the Beastmen. So you kind of want to kite them, but then they have the potential to bring hounds, loads of infantry, chariots, and it can become a really big, naughty mess. But we will get now to the damage dealt and damage value of all of these units in just a second. But if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a thumbs up just down below the video. As well as subscribing for more glorious Total War Warhammer action. We do drop stuff every single day. And we're having a live stream today even. We're doing round two and the semi-finals of the Faction War. Which I'm very excited to check out. Also comment down below, what was your favourite moment? Who was your MVP? What do you now think of this matchup? Are you like, Duck, you're completely insane. It is definitely Lizardman favourite. They run over Beastmen every time I play it, or do you think Beastmen have now started to become one of the more dominant threats to the Dino Boy forces? Likewise, if you have nothing to say, feel free just to drop a quack down below. I appreciate all the comments and love. There are links in the description as well to my Patreon if you would like to support the channel, as well as my Discord where you can submit replays, get involved in tournaments and events that I host, and chill out with a load of cool people. But anyway, onto the re real reason we are here here today. The damage dealt, damage value, the glorious blood for the blood god. 
Torox certainly got his axe wet. 25 kills, 7,491 damage dealt, 1,717 damage value. Not shabby whatsoever, considering he was still alive and had quite a lot more damage left to give. Bray Shaman of Death was an absolute nuisance to Oxyoto. 1.8k damage value, nearly 6,000 damage dealt, but really just assassinating the enemy leadership, which is kind of funny because at the moment, a lot of people are really scared of Lizardmin's assassination potential with Oxyoto and the Skink Oracle, but it kind of the reverse happened here today, coming in with the Bray Shaman and the Blood Brute. The Ungors across the board got basically no damage value, likewise the Gores really struggled. This unit, 762, is very good actually, but the others kind of really struggle again, just being outclassed by the Saurus Warriors and large dinosaurs. Ungor Raiders never really got into their perfect firing positions. Good hound play all round, just hounding out the opposition. Yes, they're not going to kill the Salamanders, but if you can stop them shooting, it buys more and more time for the Beastmen to assassinate key units, and then hop on top of the Salamanders themselves. Jeff's Life getting a rather impressive 1,690 Anti damage value, 21 kills. He's so janky, but I absolutely love it. He just kind of like bounds around the battlefield in a big old blobby mess, and it's beautiful to watch. The Blood Brute Behemoth does have basically the hunger, so he regenerates in combat, so his HP may be a little bit deceiving. He did take more than this, but got a very nice 2,332 damage value, 12k damage dealt, and look at him. He's still so much damage left in him. Uh, if the battle continue to go on. As for Pugnabon's forces, I actually quite like this idea of a build to try to counter out the Beastmen. Um, Oxyot, although maybe not the best pick here, because yes, he's got great damage dealt and damage value and stuff normally, but in this instance, where you're on a small map, you can't really cut it back effectively, and you've gone for a bit of a box. As soon as that box cracks, he's going to be in all kinds of trouble. Only 800 damage value on the little Skinky. Not terrible still, and Pugnabon did a fantastic job keeping him alive as long as he did, because there was so much pressure coming in by the boy Capped Tellus. Uh, the Skin Priest unfortunately didn't do too much. I think Manticore Summon with, yeah, Earthblood and his own spell. Maybe it was a bit too much for him, but still, you know, got in there with some nice curses in the end. And 1.6k damage value on the Skink Oracle is very impressive, but it does cost uh, closer to kind of 2 point... Uh, is it had only Earthblood, like 2.2, 2.3k or something. So unfortunately, not paying for himself to date. Source Warriors did a glorious job in the front line. Look at this, 900 damage value, 600, 1,100. Cohort of Sotek as well, 920 Sue, uh, 927 I should say, really just cleaving their way through the enemy infantry. And the Basilodon, not quite paying for itself, but nearly 911 damage value, 72 kills. Really did help the Source Warriors clear out that front line, but couldn't quite do it quick enough. So then that the um, ranged troops were online to take down the big beasties in the end game. Feral Stegodon did good, 729 damage value. As for the Salamanders, only 363 and 597. They're cheaper now, but not that cheap. And yeah, they really just struggled to get on the key targets because Captellus was really on point with his Doggo Micro, forcing back the Salamanders, and then by the time they were online, it was a little too late. Although they did do some pretty good damage to the Javis Life at one point. That's probably where almost all their damage value did indeed come from. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.